Yeah, bum, 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 bum. Personal question. Tammy says, why aren't there more men like you in the world? Tammy says, why aren't there more men like you in this world? Folks, my backstory goes like this. I, um, my, I was raised by my mom and dad uh, from, a, from a foreign country. Their, their teaching was basically this. After high school, go to college. After college, get a good job. After college, or get a good job, meet a good woman. After meeting a woman, get married, buy a house, start a family. That was my blueprint, okay? I wasn't prepared to how to be in a relationship, and I operated from a very selfish perspective for a very long time because I had childhood wounds and traumas. I mean, you know, God love you, mom and dad, but you fucked me up. And, and by the way, and I had good parents and they fucked me up. Okay. Imagine those people that had horrific parents. I mean, I, I had one woman tell me she spoke to a man who said her, her mother was a disgusting human being. I mean, thankfully I didn't have that, but I had garden variety fucked up shit from my mom and dad. And I was very myopic, very myopic in the, in the first, you know, decade of my adult life. And by the time I met my wife, I was more driven by being the provider, protector, and, and success than I was to be in a fully committed, healthy relationship. And so when my world imploded, where I got divorced, lost my quarter million dollar year job, I got wiped out in the market crash, I got completely humbled. And in that humbling moment, I almost wanted to commit suicide. I went to bed wishing I didn't wake up. I went to bed wishing I didn't wake up. And interestingly enough, my drug of choice, my drug of choice was online dating. I mean, I was addicted to online dating. I was addicted to talking to women incessantly, listening to them share their, their stories. And then what happened was along the way, you know, I had a Tony Robbins CD. I started to read Abraham Hicks. I started to read Wayne Dyer. And I realized after one year of dating, the common denominator was me. I was the problem. I was the one fucked up. I kept thinking it was the women. It was the women. It was the women. No, I was the one fucked up. And that's when I began the beginning of my journey, roughly about 2010. And then in 2011, I met a really fantastic woman who happened to be a therapist. And she helped reparent me on some level. Our relationship helped reparent me. And then I did a deep dive with the Hoffman process. I deep, did a deep dive into uh, insight seminars. I read the book, The Course in Miracles. This took a lot of work. I was in the tunnel, as uh, Alison Armstrong talks about, for over 15 years. So I've done heroic work, especially in the last four years after Connor passed away. And it inspired me to write my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? It's a journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. It's actually a bit of my story. And I invite everybody to do the inner work so they can find a level of inner peace. Inner peace. This, you know, look at, I'm not in the fully committed relationship and that's okay. I still feel a tremendous amount of inner peace in my life. And that's my invitation for everyone. So how did I get there? It took a lot of humbling events and even losing my child was a big part of this equation too. And most people, when they have humbling events, they go down the rabbit hole and they never get, they come out. They go down the rabbit hole and never come out. I was a fighter inside of me. That's why when some women say I'm feminine, I'm like, fuck, I started my own business. I make, you know, I make hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I'm a fighter. I, I lean into the most bravest thing anybody can do is to be vulnerable, to be authentic and transparent. And yet, sadly, that's called feminine traits for men. Oh, whatever the fuck that is. Anyway, that's my judgment over that. Coming back to your question, why aren't there more? Because sadly, people use drugs and alcohol to suppress their pain instead of doing the inner work. And this is true for men and for you women as well. You're just as bad at this as men. Men and women are equally bad at this. So my invitation, do the work, find that inner peace, and you might be surprised on what comes around the corner. So I want to thank you so much for that question. Lynn says, sounds like men are more feminine than women. That's just a crock of shit. Men are, okay, by the way, 
I've been characterized as effeminate because I have a capacity to communicate my feelings in an emotionally healthy way. Now, to me, that just means I have a good balance, not of my masculine and feminine energy that men are more feminine. It's just that I have a capacity to navigate life from an emotionally secure place. This comes back to my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? So to suggest men are more feminine, well, then I can make the argument that women are way more masculine than ever before. I mean, they're riddled with masculinity. And all this does is create divide amongst men and women. And that's why I'm not a big proponent of labeling men or women this way, because you can complain about men being feminine and we men could complain about you as being masculine and all that do is complaining for unhealthy behavior, most likely in someone's life. And rather than criticize them, how can we uplift people? That's my invitation. Rather than judging and criticizing, what can we do going forward to uplift people? That's my invitation for all of you, or at least that's my invitation for myself. So. Lynn, thank you for sharing that. Allowed me to chime in and point out how I feel about it.